Hey guys, it's manager Kylie and in today's video I'm going to share all the information you need to know about championship track meets and specifically the outdoor NCAA championship. So today I'm going to go through all the details of how a championship track meet runs and specifically focusing on the different events and how they are scored for a championship track meet. I'm going to be going through an outdoor track meet for the NCAA, the different events they have, and then the scoring for NCAA events. This is very similar to an indoor track meet. You would just have different events as the track is a different distance, so you run different distances. And it is very similar to the scoring used for both high school and other championship meets. The scoring's the same. I'll give you a few options for scoring on the amount of teams that you have. Just the events might differ a little bit depending on the age level and the facility that you're using. But if you guys are interested in more sports administration content just like this, definitely hit the subscribe button, turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload as I post a new video every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Now we're gonna dive into the outdoor track meet for the NCAA, how it works, and some of the different nuances you wanna know when scoring. So I'm gonna start with just listing the different events that happen at an NCAA track meet, and then go in the details of how different events are scored, field events versus running events versus relays. There are some differences in scoring, especially when it comes to tiebreakers. So I'm gonna go through all those different details. So the events that are on the track that are individual events are the 100 meter dash, the 100 meter hurdles for the women, the 110 meter hurdles for the men, the 200 meter, the 400 meter, the 800, the 1000, the 3000, the 5000, and the 10,000, as well as the 400 meter hurdles. And then for team events, you have the four by one relay as well as the four by four relay. For jumps, you have pole vault and high jump, which are your vertical jumps, and long jump and triple jump, which are your horizontal jumps. And that will make more sense when I talk about tiebreakers. And then for throwing, you have shot put, discus, hammer, and javelin. You also have the decathlon and the heptathlon. So the scoring I'm gonna go over is both for individual events as well as the relays. One key thing for the relays is every team only gets one entry. So the first one I'm gonna go over is five or fewer teams. I'm gonna give a sixth place option that wouldn't be scored in the relays as only five teams are scoring in the relays. So this, for any of these, if you have less teams, you would only score to that position for the relays as every team only gets one entry. So for scoring for five or fewer teams, first place gets 10, second place gets eight, then third gets six, fourth place gets four, fifth place gets two, and then for individual events, you would score a 1.46 place. For the relay events, you would only score that first five as you only have the five teams competing. If you have six or seven teams, the scoring is the exact same as the five teams. However, for the relays, you do score that one point as you would have other teams competing. So you have more teams at an option of scoring. So the top six places would score. So the most common thing you're gonna see at both college level and high school level for most championship meets is eight teams or more competing, which means you're going to be scoring eight places. So the scoring for this, working from first to eighth goes 10 points, then eight points, then six, then it goes five, four, three, two, one. So if you come in eighth place, you get one point. If you come in first, you get 10 points, and then you work your way in between there. This is most common for these championship meets as they are bigger events and there's a lot of teams scoring in them and competing in them. So four tiebreakers on the track, and there's a much smaller chance that there is a tie on the track as the timing system goes to a very small detail of time. So you're usually out to at least the hundredth, if not the thousandth of a second. If there is determined to be a tie, you add up the two points of the two places those people would be in, and then you divide it by two. So if you're scoring an eight person track meet, so an eight team track meet, and these people come in fourth and fifth place and they tie. Well, fourth place usually gets five points and fifth place usually gets four points. You would add together that nine points and then divide it by two. So each athlete would get four and a half points for their team. For both horizontal jumps, so your long jump and your triple jump, as well as throws, these are 
based on measurement. So for this one, you would go out and if there was a tie for the measurement, so you had two athletes with the exact same measurement, you would actually go to their second throw to determine the place. If there's still a tie then, then you go to their third best throw and work your way back that way so that you have just the straight who wins each event. So this one doesn't really end up as much with a tie in splitting points as you would go back as far as you can. If you, for some reason, had two athletes that threw only exactly the same throws and or only jumped the exact same jumps, which is very rare, then you would do the same thing, add up the points and divide them by two. However, that's very rare that that's gonna happen. So for this, you just go back to their previous throw or their previous few throws to figure out who the winner is or who came in which place. So the first thing you're gonna do for vertical jumps is you're going to figure out where the tie occurred in your scoring and you're gonna look at that height and for that height, if you, there is one athlete that took three jumps and one athlete that only took two, you would take the athlete that only took two and they would be your winner. If for some reason there is still a tie, you would actually count the missed attempts that each athlete had at all their previous jumps. So the total amount of jumps they took, all their missed attempts. So if one athlete even started at an earlier height, this may cause them to have more missed attempts. So whoever has lower amount of missed attempts would actually be the winner as they didn't take as many attempts to get to that jump. And then whoever had more missed attempts would be the place below. If there's still a tie and these athletes jumped exactly the same way, you would actually just give them both the same place. So they would both tie for say third place or they would both tie for second place or whatever. And you would actually take that place and the place below it, add the points and then divide by two if it was two athletes. If for some reason this was concerning first place, you would allow both whatever athletes were still remaining in that tie to compete one more time. They'd get another opportunity at jumping to see if they are able to clear it to try and find an actual winner. And then if they are unable to clear that height, you would actually move the bar back down till you get athletes that are able to clear it and able to actually determine a winner. Now I'm not gonna get into the details right here, but you might have effects of win on the track and how that affects scoring. There are legal win requirements for some jumping events as well as some running events. If the event is too win dated, your score may not count um, for some bigger competitions. So you just wanna be aware of that. You will have win gauges at bigger events to keep track of that to make sure the win's legal um, for qualification for other events. But this is the basic scoring for track and field and how a track and field championship meet kind of runs in the different events. If you have any questions about the scoring, definitely let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I will see you guys next Wednesday.